seventies. Most, in fact, one of my favorites because I went as I was, I listened to them after to a good chunk of them after reading, and I thought I, I think I might actually have a favorite here, which is unbelievable because I'm not known for having favorites. But it's from the seventies, so the Kinks, the Father Christmas. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's <laughs> just so because fun. it's <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Sorry, no, this is not about me, but I'm. I wanted to ask you about the song. The this I I hadn't heard the song. Oh man, and like, uh, oh, uh, Dave, are you saying no, something? No, no, I, I I find it amazing because that's all I hear on classic rock stations was yeah. Father Christmas, mm -hmm. and you know, just give me some money. I mean, it's it's a perfect King song that it speaks to class and and uh, you know those that have and those that do not, those that suffer. So yeah, go, and and why you love it, Hal, Annie? Well, and that's you know what is interesting is that you know, with this list, it is, there are some people, you know, if you mention a song, they're like, oh, of course I know that. Yeah, that makes sense. But there are a lot of Christmas songs, people are like, oh, I'm not familiar with that. It's really interesting. And I think that's something else that really kind of speaks to, you know, first off, what songs have sort of survived, you know, in terms of being, having heavy radio play or, you know, in-store play, but then also just like your different experience to Christmas music. Uh, but the Kinks, I love that one because it was, it was so funny because that came when they were their career was sort of in a weird place in the seventies. Like you know, it was it was interesting to me that they were actually bigger in the U.S. at that point than in the U.K. And so this song came about it. It is it's a story talking about you know class and talking about you know kids who beat up Santa Claus and but they basically. Um, you know, they want Santa to bring, you know, jobs and like money because it's a very depressed time in England, which 1977, there you go. And it's also kind of one of their um, more punkish songs, I think, too. And, you know, I think the Kinks especially were known for kind of towing the line and, you know, being a little bit, um, you know, a little bit, you know, more aggressive and heavier at times. And so it just really, it, it sounds very, very sort of futuristic. And it wasn't a hit. That's the funny thing is that it's not like this was a huge hit at all. And it's become this sort of, you know, classic standard. But um, but yeah, I love it. And it's just, you know, they did the song in character, you know, when they performed in England that year. It's it's great. It's just perfect. I which, love it. Which remind, did you, is there a playlist of, of all your songs? Has, have you or someone else made the 100 song playlist available? Yes. And okay. I should share that. There's a Spotify playlist. And it's funny, believe it or not, 99 songs of the 100 are there. The only one that's missing is XTC, a.k.a. The Three Wise Men, Thanks for Christmas. Not streaming. I had no idea until we put this together. I searched for that under every possible, yeah, yeah Three Wise Men. Yeah. You can find it was on Dragon Bone Buffet, too. So I guess, you know, that must not be streaming. And so, I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe there's some weirdness. I think that was still on Virgin Records. And so maybe there's some weirdness there. I don't know. But it's so good. It's so great. It's such a, you know, a fake XTC song, but it's like an actual XTC song. It's so good. Right. It's like AI <laughs> created an XTC yeah. song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to. I'll, well, I'll put that. I'm, it's on YouTube. So we'll stream that one and. What, yeah, I guess there's there's so many reasons probably why it's not on there right now. Do you know who, who produced that? Was That wasn't during the Rundgren years, was it? No, it was just before. And so it's, you know, obviously this was, I think, when XTC was just going into, because it was like right, I think it was right before the Dukes of Stratosphere too. So that was like right when Andy was like, I'm going to have a million different personalities and record with them. And so, but they, they kind of had the subterfuge going, like, you know, they, they released it. It was a big old kind of like wink, wink, even in the trade magazines, they were talking like, oh yeah, it's this band. And you know, they all denied it was XTC, but you listen to it. It's like, yeah, that's XTC. Like you can't, there's no denying that that's Andy Partridge singing. And it sounds like them too. So it was a little bit, um, you know, it was a little bit, I think, poppier though, than the stuff they were doing at the time. Cause that was like right around like English settlement and big express and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it was definitely a little bit more of the, um, you know, his his more kind of, you know, I don't know, almost Kinksian actually sort of 